Hi everyone, I'm Peter Lam, um, author of this book, uh, Profit Makes Your Business. And we do this uh, program every week or every couple of days. So basically what we try and do is bring value to business owners, to entrepreneurs, to the business community. And uh, so far we've been talking a lot about business tips and strategies and all that. But because of the pandemic and the impact on the pandemic on all businesses, I thought today we could also explore and examine um, the topic of mental health, no? Because all of us are under so much stress. Even in a normal situation, we experience a bit of stress. But in this pandemic, it's really no joke, right? So not only are we worried about uh, the Delta variant and then maybe moving on to Epsilon and God knows what, but, uh, you know, there's also a lot of impact on the economy, on businesses, you know, with constant lockdowns and all that. So there's added stress, no? And there's all kinds of uncertainty that we are facing. Um, you know, our, those of us who have school-going kids, you know, our kids' education is being disrupted. So we are hit on so many fronts. So that's obviously very stressful. So today we are very privileged to have a special guest with us. And I'd like to introduce Mr. Justin Victor. Um, Justin is a friend of mine. And he's, uh, he's actually the chairman of the Befrienders KL. And he's been holding that position for several years now. He's been a counselor and a, and a exco of uh, Befrienders for many years. I'll let him tell us more about that. Um, and he's also a senior lecturer with uh, Taylor's University, where he's with the School of uh, Journalism and Communications, I guess. I'm not, I'm not sure whether I got that right. But he's, media, he's a media, senior media. lecturer, yeah. So uh, maybe to, to kick things off, Justin, you could just briefly introduce yourself and tell us a bit about yourself. Hi, hello. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in. So, uh, yeah, I've been in Befrienders for a little over 23 years and really started by finding a way to help people, especially those who are distressed, depressed, and suicidal. Befrienders is a helpline mainly, started off as a helpline to uh, offer the services of uh, emotional support on the phone, but it's also expanded to uh, outreach and physical uh, engagement of the community. And mm -hmm. the sole purpose of uh, decreasing or reducing or even eliminating the need for people to end their life just by offering them a listening ear, etc. It's a lay effort in terms of uh, all the members not being uh, professionals. We are but we are trained, you know, specifically in this art of mm. listening. Mm. So I myself have been doing that for all this while and then slowly got involved in the training of new members, those coming in, the volunteers, and only more recently, maybe the last five years or so, into the actual board of uh, directors of the centre. You know? mm. uh, and besides that, of course, my day job is, this is wholly a voluntary service. The day job is as a, a lecturer in media and communication. But wherever possible, I've also tried to study uh, from the communication aspect some uh, elements of the suicidal behavior and how media is affecting suicide behavior. Mm, okay, yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, right? yeah because, and, and, uh, because we all know the media has to sell, and the, the thing that, that will sell well is sensationalism, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah and sometimes true. the sensational stuff can be very depressing. Yeah. And, and, and we are all media consumers. So when we consume that, that, that negative news, that, that uh, sordid story or whatever, it impacts us definitely, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so maybe to start off, uh, uh, yeah. Justin, maybe you could tell us a bit about the general state of mental health in our country. And, uh, you know, if you have any statistics to share or anything and uh, how, how, how things have been over the last maybe 18 months since COVID hit us, no? So maybe we yeah. can start there. Yeah, Just yeah, sure. I, but I like, yeah. yeah, I like to take it back a bit, little sure, before sure. the eighteen months, which is, uh, you know, the Ministry of Health does a two yearly survey on national health mobility survey. It looks at all aspects of health, like ah. diabetes, heart, etc. And one of the aspects is mental health. So a few years ago, about five years ago or so, they already found that Malaysians have about one in three Malaysians have mental health problems. One in now this, three. Yeah, but this wow. is not, uh, this is mental health problems. I mean, somehow they are distressed or disturbed and cannot function fully. Ah. But not necessarily meaning mental illness. Mental okay. illness means they've already actually been 
uh, diagnosed by a professional, usually a psychiatrist, with a particular syndrome or issue, you know. But besides that, it's uh, this aspect of a lot of people being just troubled, stressed, uh, in a very general sense of being depressed, or the more common one is, of course, being stressed. Huh? Uh, and that they found about a third of Malaysians already were experiencing that. Huh? So let's even mm. take a conservative effort. We are talking about, you know, about uh, three in 10. So, you know, any group of 10 people, at least three or so are, you know, having this kind of uh, mental health problems. <laughs> So what's happened now in these last 18 months is this whole lockdown, everybody knows about it. Yeah. And I think a lot of research and indications also come up about the increase in mental health problems. Yes. So that's a kind of like an almost an obvious uh, of, uh, effect of the lockdown. You know? So in many ways, the lockdown is like a, some traumatic event. Mm. It's causing stress to everybody some yeah. have better resilience some have better uh, character or yeah. support systems that allows them to be able to deal with it yes we've also seen like you know police coming out with information of a uh, greater number of suicides mm. so if you say look behind that that means if there are suicides that means there are also more people who are having different kind of mental health issues mental health problems Yep. What are these generally? It would be again like stress being a big one, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, depression, anxiety, a sense of anxiousness mm. about all that's happening around them. Mm. Uh, in terms of numbers, it's uh, hard to tell, but I'd say at least you know, if you're talking about the study done several years ago, it would be about the same or a little more, you know, at least about a third of the population mm. would be feeling somehow oppressed by the whole lockdown. Yeah, so, you know, in, in earlier studies have shown already that about a third of Malaysians are having mental health problems. Uh, then since the lockdown, obviously, and we have seen, you know, various instances and issues uh, of studies being shown about how the mental health is deteriorating in the country. Uh, everyone, the Prime Minister, even the Director General of Health, all have already recognized this and mm. are concerned about it. You know? yeah. So yeah. the lockdown and the whole pandemic issue is a form of trauma, not very different from being in war, some say. You know? mm. uh, even though you may not be shot directly or may not be in the zone of gunfire and gunfights or, or fight uh, actual gun battles, there is a whole sense that there is a threatening situations surrounding us. Mm. So that can cause, on a general level itself, a lot of anxiousness about the situation, a lot about stress too. Yeah? And okay. here, we're not even touching about the practical consequences of the lockdown, which is loss of jobs or, or, or you know, pay cuts and other things that are mm. affecting businesses mm. and companies. Yes. If you take all of that in consideration, into consideration, we are seeing many things that are impinging or pressing upon people more than before. Mm. So the situation is such that someone who is before, in most purposes, fine, you know, would feel a little stressed, pressed, distressed. You know? Those who already have mental health problems or mental illness would be even further pressed or worse, worsened. Mm. So more triggers are there to make them feel bad. So again, I mean, if you're addressing businesses, the obvious thing is um, work is important to continue. Yeah? Mm. Income is important to continue. Yep. And what people need to kind of figure out and to work out for themselves is how to, to keep that uh, effort going of, of uh, getting the bread and butter and all that. But at the same time, mm. paying some attention to their mental health. Because it's not just the work and work issues that are now affecting them, but even more so. Already normally we have work, family, and the personal life going on. But now even there's the whole surrounding yeah. fear, impending like a gloom, you know. Yes. Uh, and then even business-wise, they're saying, oh, even more of a recession may be faced in the future. Yeah. 
And then every day we keep hearing more and more businesses having to close. Huh? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think one of the things so, that hmm. yeah. go, ahead. go ahead. No, I was gonna ask. So what 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 can people do, you know, to kind of stay hmm. mentally healthy and yeah. I guess to deal with the stress, no? Because as yeah. you described, the stress is very real. And, and yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, uh, didn't really think about it. But you are saying some people liken it actually to being in a war situation, that kind of level of stress, huh? Yeah. Because you're locked yeah. in the house. Yeah. And you know there's a bug out there. You don't want to go out. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to be shot with a bullet, but you could be, you could yeah. be attacked by something even more deadly called a virus, no? Which you can't yeah. see. So it's an invisible yeah. enemy. So yeah. that's one. And in addition to that, you were also saying quite rightly. You know, people's loss of jobs and, you know, you worry about your children, you worry about your family. And you also hear reports, right, from the from the ministries and all that of higher cases of uh, what you call domestic violence, quarrels and all that. Because there's so much tension, right? I mean, you're living together 24 hours instead yeah. of going away for eight hours to chill and all that or whatever, you know. Yeah. But so, so as a business owner, there's a particular stress, right? Mm. So you have to you have to worry about whether you can make payroll this month when your business is not open or only sixty percent operating. Yeah. And at the same time, mm. what's the scenario going to be? You know, can your business recover if there is a lift in there's an uplift in the in the MCO lockdown and all that? Yeah. So yeah. so maybe maybe you could give some tips and advice on how how people can handle this stress and have some have some mental balance, no? Yeah. Emotional yeah. balance and all that. Yeah. yeah. So there are two things here. I mean, or rather two groups of people. Yes, one, yes. one of those who are the business owners and managers, maybe at managerial level. Mm. And then there are the others who are working in the organization. The, yep, the Even team. long before the pandemic, there were already a lot of studies showing about how stress, workplace stress, etc. actually is not good business because it affects your business efficiency. Mm. Because if your people are not efficient, if they are taking longer to do a piece of work than they normally would because they are, you know, the mind is not there properly focused, they're not healthy, then you are basically losing every day some efficiency. And yeah. loss of efficiency, of course, will be loss of output and income also, isn't it? Yeah, right? For yeah. the, any organization. Yeah. yeah. So uh, again, a long time already this is known. Uh, and then now it's become worse. More pronounced, think, yeah. Yeah, if you think of the dynamic here, the business owners are stressed and pressured to keep their businesses afloat and alive mm. and, and yes. you know, functioning. So if they don't, the business owners themselves don't manage their own stress and anxiety, if they pass it on to their workers, then their workers also are going to be extra stressed yeah. Besides the their own personal stress of you know the whole yeah. COVID thing surrounding yeah. them, their family, what do you think? Then you're just gonna see, in a sense, business efficiency or workplace efficiency also drop. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a corollaries, you know. So there's long known uh, link between mental and the physical. So when you're stressed, you're more likely to get ill. When mm -hmm. you're ill, you're more likely to even see a doctor. And there are also medical expenses that the company will be incurring possibly more. And same with insurance or whatever. So there are a lot of these things which if you go backwards again, best to take care of your mental health as a, as a business leader or a you know, business owner mm. and make sure that your staff also are taken care of in terms of their stress. So I know it's a tough thing because people now need to say, oh, I need to work harder because we're getting less business so we need to work harder. But if you're pressing then your staff beyond a reasonable extent, at the yeah. least then you must be very careful to see any signs that the person is being affected and not able to take the stress anymore. Okay. So we'll come back to how to deal with this stress in a little while. But since you mentioned these uh, symptoms or what to look out for huh, when people have stress, maybe you yeah. could tell, tell us a bit about what are the symptoms and signs to look out for, no? When they make sure. like danger signals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on a simple level, usually we say for anything like for depression, anxiety, stress, uh, etc., changes in behavior, you know, mm. changes in the way that a person behaves. So, like say, normally you are, you know, a, a friendly, smiling person, etc., and then suddenly you see this person always very down, gloomy, downcast. Uh, so that's a sign, obvious sign. 
Then the other things also are like, you know, they come in with like, you know, uh, bloodshot eyes and dark rings around the eyes, which indications of poor sleep. Mm. So if people are starting to have poor sleep, their sleep patterns are disrupted. That's another thing that is a sign that they are being affected by something mm. mental also. You know? mm. uh, so that's, uh, then the other is, you know, like things like, um, are they more irritable? Of course, you may have people who are already <laughs> naturally, normally irritable kind of people, you know, always uh, chiding and scolding everybody else. <laughs> but if that's their normal character, then that's it. That's okay. I mean, not okay, but you know, that's yeah, a different yeah. thing. Yeah. The mental health point of view, then you say, is there a change in the behavior? Usually a very accommodating person. Now, every time jumping, shouting, mm. people, mm. Uh, that's when it is. Always doing work, uh, but now, you know, you sometimes you see them, you know, maybe sleeping at their desk or if it's uh, other kind of work, they are uh, taking longer to do that piece of mm. work. Or you, you when you're having a meeting, then you see that they can't focus very well on what is going on. Uh, so mm. all of those are, you've got to put them together. So again, just to say a few again, uh, changes in the behavior in terms of temperament, attitude, uh, sleep, whether you can identify whether there's some sleep disturbances, uh, whether they are reacting uh, more um, violently, aggressively, or the other side, that means become more docile, quiet, not talking. Uh, so mm. that also can be signed. Mm. Uh, then yeah, so of course someone talk- who's normally very vibrant and very outgoing, yeah, yeah, becomes yeah. very quiet and very subdued. Yeah. Yeah? That's also yeah. a change. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Then a uh, sudden loss of weight or gain of weight. Ah, okay. But this is a tricky one because if you're working from home and all that, you know, <laughs> less physical exercise and you're putting on weight, yeah. they are indicators. They are not absolute markers of mm. what's going on. So if somebody's losing weight, then you'd want to check, you know, are you losing weight because you have mm. lost appetite? Mm. The loss of appetite is another kind of symptom of something not so good in your mental state or emotional state. Yep. So someone in depression or, or stress so can start to lose a lot of weight. Or the other way, increase also. Put on weight because uh, one compensation is maybe to eat more. You need more comfort food. Yeah, yeah, comfort <laughs> food. Or binge, binge eat. Or, yeah, binge or, eat, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or the simple thing of just sitting in your desk more often if, if you're a work from home kind of a job yeah, or a business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these so, are definitely things that the, the employer and not just yeah. the employer actually uh, it, it's the onus is on also uh, co-workers and friends you know to yes, actually yeah. ob- observe that of friends and then check with them yeah. you have to start these conversations yep. and checking yep. on each other mm. you know, this whole kita jaga kita makes a lot of sense you have to yes, take care yes. of each other so, you know? yes I, I think that's even more important because like you say you know sometimes the boss may be a bit removed and may not have contact with, yeah. the, with the staff in, in, in question yeah yeah one Second thing is also nowadays everyone is working from home and you're working remotely. Yeah. So there's really no no physical, not much physical contact. Yeah. So like you say, you know, we also have to um, have our colleagues and friends, you know, monitor and check in. But those are very good tips, huh? So yeah. Uh, changes oh, in mon- behavior, yeah. mm. uh, lack of sleep or disturbance of sleep patterns. So you can notice that they're having rings in their eyes or bloodshot eyes or yeah. being tired or whatever, sleeping mm. during the day and all that. Mm. And the third one was uh, in terms of interaction, no? Could yeah. be a very mild person, very accommodating person, suddenly become very aggressive. Yeah. Or vice versa, someone who's very outgoing, very very jovial and very uh, you know, gregarious, suddenly becomes very cloistered and, cl- and closed down and all yeah. that. So those yeah. are, and then the, the, you also think about putting on weight, losing weight suddenly kind of thing. Yeah, so so those are some good things, some good tips, you know, on what to look out for. Mm. Then I guess I guess as as owners and bosses, then if you notice these things, you have to kind of show care and attention, you know, and then see how how you can help out, you no? Know, yeah, see a bit of dialogue and all that. Mm. And of course, that also is a function of the culture of the organization, you know, whether there's yeah. a certain caring culture or whether it's like you know you just do your work. <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. Some okay. of the bigger companies have actually taken. Uh, close notice of this and either they have already had or they have started or beginning to start what they call EAPs, uh, Employee Assistance Program. So it's a conscious, organized effort by the HR or senior managers to have 
mm. uh, various kinds of support for their staff, like mm. at least you know once a month uh, mental health talks or workshops from uh, whoever is willing to offer. Uh, some of them even have uh, on retainers some counselors who they make available to staff to call on the uh, on the dime or the or the cost of the company. Yeah. Yep. So they can they have a hotline they can call, but more specific. Mm their care okay so those are various things that uh, employers can do yeah but on, on a, even a simpler level is as i said no the bosses also need to be aware of the kind of stress that they may be placing mm. on their people yeah it's not uncommon to hear and this is not you know betraying any confidence not only on the phone but everywhere else i hear a lot of people are saying about unreasonable expectations of bosses Mm. Especially maybe in sales line or what. No? At, at the moment, you can't go knocking on people's doors. You can't go certain places. Sometimes those elements need to be taken into consideration. Now. So it's really, I mean, it's not saying bosses don't push. They have to. But to find the balance between the push and the mm. release a bit. Mm. And also notice what effect is having on the staff. You know? Because it is a given fact, some people can... Uh, take the stress much better. Yeah. I mean, they will, they will uh, step up. Yeah. You push them harder, they will just take it and then step up. You know, and just, yeah. But yeah. some people will be pushed down and then the productivity mm. will drop even more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. so I guess I guess that's a very important point. And, and the fact that you know, the big companies are uh, doing something proactive, um, I just want, just, just, that just reminds me, you know, I have a friend uh, she was formerly the HR director of Microsoft here in KL. She's now been transferred to head office in Seattle. And mm. so we, we just keep in touch on LinkedIn. Then one day I saw uh, just this maybe maybe a few weeks or maybe a month ago, she posted a picture of a certificate, no? You know, surprise, you know what, what she got a certificate in? Mental it- health leadership. Oh. So I was thinking, so I, I say, wow, bravo, well done. No, So she's actually moving more proactively. And looking at mental health leadership and how how I guess to like what you're saying as an organization like Microsoft, how can they provide that, that mental health for their whole team, no? Given all the increased stress that everyone is facing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to go back to how we can deal with stress. No? I mean, the leaders, as you correctly say, right? They say they have to they have to stay calm. If they don't stay calm, they'll make lousy decisions or make no decisions or make wrong decisions, no. And also, yes. if they don't stay calm, they won't be able to spot opportunities when they come. And worse, you know, they might put all the stress onto their team, which is what we want to avoid, right? So what would be some tips that you can offer to, 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 to the bosses or to the owners of businesses or people who run, run big organizations in terms of managing their stress levels and, and looking after their own mental good health? Yeah, there's a host of things. Uh... Of course, the self-care for mental health also is just as important as the physical. I said mm-hmm. both go together, right? So mm-hmm. one is actually to keep up and even step up even physical uh, activity and exercise or training if you haven't already, you know, uh, and take care of that. The other is balance, uh, making sure that you have a balance in your life uh, and do try and compartmentalize the life as normally you would have in the normal working time and world. That mm. means even the time that you take to drive from your home back, uh, from the office back to home, is a clear break from the workplace. Of course, you have the uh, additional people who have a driver and they continue working with their phone even on the drive back. But otherwise, you know, those are clear times of break, even when you have to. But when you're sitting at home and working a lot from home, you may forget that and then that can impinge on your state because it's a continuous mm. uh, engagement in many ways. Then the other is, of course, social media and your engagement in that. Mm. Uh, the other is also uh, things like, uh, you know, the uh, what what media is doing to you. That means you're constantly looking at bad news. Yes. Uh, and you got to know that what that means. So that means if you are one who is uh, averagely looking and wanting to see the news, make sure you get a good balance so that it is not all bad news. Yeah. Because there are good things that are still happening and will mm. continue to happen more and more. 
uh, everything from uh, ways to deal with COVID to ways to deal with business, business helps available. Uh, so just to get the mind in a certain calmer state. You know? Then the other is, of course, uh, yeah, family time, uh, make sure that, you know, so that's all that part of that balance. You know? uh, leisure time to put that in. Simple other thing is if you're working from home completely, they say try and make a difference in the physical space also as far as possible. That means you work here, but then you go somewhere else to eat, and drink, watch television, sleep, play with the kids or talk with your wife or whatever. You know? So make a clear distinction of the two so that there is that mental, internal feeling that it's not one continuous uh, engagement with only work-related issues and efforts. So that's where the, to adjust, huh? Yeah, to adjust variety, you know, uh, mm. sitting down, don't sit so long, make sure you stand up every hour, mm. move around legs under the table if you want, like, you know, how you do in long plane rides. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. things things like that, uh, small, small things, but many small things that you need to do to take yeah, care yeah, of yourself. Yeah. And at some point, maybe you may need to actually reach out to uh, helplines you know, just to uh, get it off your chest, so to speak, mm, whatever mm. it is that you're troubled about. And there are several helplines. Um, Befrienders is one, but there are a few others also that are now offering their services free mm. online. So it always helps to just get it off your chest with people who you don't yep. worry about them judging you or them seeing you any less. You know? yep. So yep. Maybe you can't talk to your colleagues, you can't talk to your family even sometimes. Yep. Yep. So reach out and talk. Yeah, so sometimes you might, in the business world, you might have to talk to a mentor or a coach yes. or something. Yes, mentor or coach, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So sometimes, so then, you know, you're, you are one, of, one of your guys in your factory has been tested positive. Mm. Then you have to scramble and do all kinds of things, tighten the SOPs yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Then you're so stressed up, you know, you, you, and maybe you have to you have to clean up, uh, you have to sanitize your place for a week or whatever, and you can't operate. Yeah. So these yeah. are things that sometimes my clients also talk to me about and discuss. No? Mm. So sometimes it's good, not just to unload, just to unload yes. it off. Yes. Get it? Yes. No, just just to speak it out, I think is a release of stress, yeah. you know, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's part of the actually the coaching uh, framework, also, isn't it? Our approach. Mm -hmm. So the idea is don't don't have to go it alone, yeah, especially yeah. in terms of the mental processes and thinking about yes. something. You know? yeah. Don't yeah. bottle so, it all up. Nah. Yeah, don't bottle it up. You know? So if yeah. you've got a coach, great. You know? you, yeah. And there are still coaches who can do it even you know, online, not like you are doing yeah, yourself. Yeah, no? yeah. So that's a great possibility. Of course, then there are uh, Good the friends help, and uh, yeah. yeah, the helplines, which are just a quick, uh, you know, when you're really down. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you can stay anonymous. You don't, yes. they don't have to know you. Uh, so, so you. I think that's, that's one of the beautiful parts about befrienders, right? So sometimes people don't like to. They just want. They prefer. They prefer anonymity, yeah. right? And that's yeah. one of the wonderful things about the befrienders helpline. You don't yeah. have to identify yourself. You don't have to give your IC number. <laughs> nothing. You know? Yeah, yeah. You don't even yeah. have to give your real name if you don't want to, right? That's true. That's yeah, true. So yeah. that's great. Yeah. yeah. So, so I guess you know, from my my own uh, perspective, we can add on to what you were saying. Um, I always tell people one of the good ways to stay calm is to meditate, or if you are if you are, if you have a prayer habit, that's even better. And if you pray, that's even better, because that that helps you spiritually as well. So, so we are all a very complex human beings are complex, and right? we have our mental. Uh, the realm or dimension, we have a physical dimension, emotional dimension, but we also have a spiritual dimension, no? So all these things need to be in balance. So 10-15 uh, I mean, minutes of prayer or meditation, if you prefer to call it, or yoga or whatever, you know, that's also very good. And and I guess sometimes you have to unwind, you know? So I, I think senior executives in, in big corporations are very good because they know how to unwind. They know they have a glass of wine in the evening and watch a bit of uh, football or, or or listen to some music or whatever, you know. So you got to find ways to distress and and unwind as well. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah, if you, absolutely. because like like Justin says, no, if you as a business leader are not in good control of your physical and moon mental and emotional health, then obviously it's just gonna just gonna somehow impact the rest of your organization. Everyone's gonna feel it. So that's you're only gonna compound things, yeah. And, and from a productivity standpoint, he's already shared with us the impact of that you know, on how it can impact productivity. 
So not only, not only is the individual affected from a care perspective, but from an organization perspective, productivity goes down as well. Yeah. Okay. Anything yeah. else you'd like to add, uh, Justin? Uh, just to maybe reiterate the point, you know, we, we can never make, not never, uh, but we are most likely to make good decisions when we are in a good emotional state. So sometimes that can be mixed up with having a good, strong mind and thinking. So maybe you're clear and you're thinking, you've got a managerial kind of look at things and you know uh, project management, etc. But also take note of your emotional state because when you're coming to making a decision, it must not be driven or influenced by uh, you know, anxiousness or stress or something. And then the decision gets clouded or, or not the best. Yeah. So, I mean, any kind of, even personal relationship, you're saying, you, know, when you want to say something to your loved one, the better you be in a good state before you say it, not <laughs> react. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Very good. So um, if, if, I mean, just, just for people who might have friends or whatever who want to get in on people that you want, the audience might want to refer to Befrienders, what's the best way to contact Befrienders, Justin? Uh, yeah, okay, I'll tell the number, uh, 06, uh, sorry, 03-7627-2929. Okay. 03-7627-2929. So that's the uh, hotline number, and that's for a quick chat of any sort. You can go to the website for, let's say, if we are not uh, available. So our website is befrienders.befrienders, uh, with S, befrienders.org.my. And on the landing page, opening page, there are also a list of sources for other kinds of help if, if you need, you know, that means uh, sometimes it is to actually see a psychiatrist or a counselor or some type of that. So a few mental health services are mm. listed there. And then you can also have a long list of the hot, other hotlines that are available because we have been very overloaded also. And sometimes people say they can't even get through to defenders. So especially when you're really troubled at, at the point, like almost breakdown or, even thinking of you know something worse like ending your life or anything like that, those thoughts, you need to reach out quickly. And mm. this is one way. Call the hotline. If we are engaged, then try a few of the other hotlines listed there. Mm. Many more have come up uh, recently. Okay. Okay. Good. And and uh, if if let's say a company an organization wants to have organized a little talk or something for their team or, or association or whatever. Is there a contact available in the website as well? Uh, yes, there is. And okay. Basically, it's the administrative number. If you go down, yeah, slide down, it will be the Defenders admin, admin at defenders.org.my. So you can write in and then uh, it's something we've already been doing for a long while. Mm. This is our public engagement and public awareness session. So it can be uh, just the awareness talk, it can be basic skills talk, ranging from one hour, one and a half hours. Yeah, so yes, that's definitely a possibility. Now, I was going to ask, you know, there's a certain kind of, I guess you can call it stigmatization, you know, people with mental health, you know. Um, is, that, is that trend coming down? Is, is, is awareness and education more better now? Or what, what, what can we do to to change that, that stigmatization, no? Well, the stigma does seem to be coming down in terms of, you know, we seeing more people reaching out for help, those who have mental health problems, but it is not gone. So it is still common to find, you know, situations and places where people say, I'm not crazy. So even if we approach the point of getting some help, uh, they, so they, there's that whole thing. And then the other is, where younger people or somebody in the family says they need help and the family, the rest of the family is against it because they say they're just making it up or making a big deal out of it. Or they don't want the family having somebody who is mentally ill or unsound, you know? Mm. So that's the stigma that still continues for uh, several people. Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of numbers, I don't, but how to overcome it? People need to talk more, as you see also stars and celebrities and 
Uh, how you can yeah, overcome yeah. stigma. How you can overcome stigma is actually to talk more about it. We're seeing celebrities and athletes talking about it openly, talking about it, uh, frankly sharing their personal life. Mm. So same too with others. Allow others also to uh, talk about their mental illness and don't put it down as just making a big deal out of nothing. Do not mm. do that. You know? mm. Do not say that someone is an attention seeker. Mm. It's something that people are troubled about. So when you do that, then people will feel more free to open up and to talk about it. Mm. Uh, and also help seeking mm. behavior shouldn't be put down. That means mm. If I want to see a psychiatrist or psychologist, doesn't mean it's any less of the person or of the family. Yeah. So don't belittle or dismiss the, the conversation. Uh. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. So on that note, Justin, I'd like to thank you very much for coming on, on board to talk to us today. And uh, well, hopefully things get better. So take care, everyone. All the best. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye thank you, now. Peter. All the best. Yeah. Okay, welcome.